Okay, next let's talk about neural network regressions. So if linear regression is at one end of the spectrum in terms of its uh, speed and accuracy, meaning it's the fastest and least accurate, generally speaking, then neural network is at the opposite end of that spectrum, most accurate and slowest. That doesn't mean it'll always be the most accurate. Yes, I've had rare occasions where I've had a, uh, even a linear regression be more accurate, but this is generally speaking how it'll work. Uh, if you have the time and are interested, there's some really cool stuff uh, on Wikipedia and lots of places on uh, artificial neural networks. The idea and the way it works is that it takes your set of independent variables and it generates its own layer. Uh, they call it hidden, although it's, it doesn't have to be hidden. We can It's just a mathematical formula to generate new combinations of variables based on those input variables. And this includes things like nonlinear variables. So remember that assumption we learned before with linear regression that you had to uh, test for nonlinear terms like uh, logarithmic terms, uh, polynomials, exponential terms to see if um, that assumption of linearity was true. And uh, we had to uh, relax that assumption by adding other nonlinear terms. Neural networks handle all of that problem for you. And then they in turn use that hidden layer they build to predict an output. And in our case, we're just going to have one output. But it's pretty straightforward to use. Here's Microsoft's documentation for it. So um, although neural networks are widely known for use in deep learning and modeling complex problems such as image recognition, they're easily adapted to regression problems. Any class of statistical models can be termed a neural network if they use adaptive weights and can approximate nonlinear functions of their inputs. Adaptive weights means uh, that hidden layer coming up with uh, a hidden set of coefficients that can adapt based on the inputs. Anyway, um, so uh, neural network recognition is due to problems where a more traditional regression model cannot fit a solution because there are issues with nonlinearity. Anyway, it's pretty easy and straightforward to use. Um, let's take a look at some of these options, though. These are pretty useful. Actually, well, no, I've changed my mind. <laughs> the purpose of this chapter is to cover these algorithms pretty quickly, so I'm not going to take the time to go into it in too much detail. But let's just come here. Let's change out a linear regression, delete that one, drop in a neural network regression, connect the dots. Notice there are lots of options, though, to mess with here with neural networks. Um, I, I think it's probably best just to leave the defaults unless you're willing to go in and learn uh, exactly what um, some of these parameters mean. But like Naive Bayes, we have this option to allow unknown categories. So we have categorical variables allow uh, uh, new predictions to include categories that we've never seen or used before. Um, but really, these are all just fine. So just leave them as is. Um, hidden layer specification, the fully connected case, this take a look at this. This basically means we're taking each of these variables and we're regressing them against each of these hidden ones that's fully connected. And then each of these hidden ones against every output, um, just leave it as is. That's going to give us our back, whoops, our best uh, R squared value. And anyway, let's go ahead and run the prediction. So let's double check. We're still purchased by numeric. Yep. So remember with the, uh, with the linear regression, we had a 10.46 or something like that. So let's keep that in mind and run this one. Ah, so look, oh, sorry. I should have started my video a second ago. Right click on evaluate model, visualize, check it out. Lower R squared. So it does happen. Let's try this with a different data set and see if we can find an example of where this actually improves things. So let's use, uh, I'm going to save this one. Yep, leave it now. Let's use, uh, hmm. Let's try that survey data again. So here in the survey data, I'm going to go back to, um, come on, remove our ordinal regression, drop in our linear, and let's just get a baseline reading here. Okay, let's, um, so we're in here we're predicting, let's check it out and see real quick. We're predicting how agreeable they are. That's what agreeableness two is, and it's gonna be based on, let's see here. Uh, we should actually take out the other agreeableness variables because those will be very highly correlated. 
It's predict agreeableness based on um, culture, all these other things here. So this is going to get pretty complex and there's going to be a lot of multicollinearity across these variables. And I'm pretty sure that a neural network will do a better job of, of catching that one. So, okay, we're predicting agreeableness too. Linear regression, let's go for that one. Uh, well, first of all, save and then run. All right, let's check this one out here. Evaluate, visualize. Um, hmm, I've messed something up here. I shouldn't have a negative R squared. There should be no such thing. I've seen Azure do this every once in a while. Huh. Well, that's fine. I think I think we can ignore the error actually. But 0.569. Let's copy this one. It could be that that variable. So this is my linear regression. This is our neural network. Let's see what we get with this one here. Delete. Um, all right, neural network. Let me just double check and make sure there's nothing I'm forgetting here. Oh, come on, one more time. There we go. Okay, now let's run that one. Okay, let's take a look at this one now. Okay, so this is an actual realistic R squared here, 11.7%. Something's going on with this one right here. That's not right. I shouldn't be getting that at all. Let me see if I can fix that problem real quick and, and give an, do a more accurate comparison here. Let me drop this linear regression back in and see what I might be doing here that's messing this up. Um, hmm. Let's take out, I'm wondering if I'm getting some issues with some of these categorical columns because there's so many different possible values. Yeah, let's remove those. I bet my ordinary, my uh, OLS regression is just struggling with that. Okay, let's run this one now. All right, let's check it out here. Huh, I keep getting continually stranger and stranger results. Let's quit using R squared at all and let's go by root mean square error instead. So again, lower numbers here are better. Let's plug this one in right here. This is our R squared RMSE. Um, I just I can't trust what that's coming up with. That's just not right. There's some sort of issue there. But let's check out the RMSE now for neural network. All right, let's take a look at that one. Okay, perfect, yep. And actually, when we take out those, look, our R squared even goes up even higher. So root mean squared error, much lower for the neural network, um, which means, which is better. And R squared goes even higher when we include those. We were getting something uninterpretable from the linear regression for that. But anyway, neural network far outperforms linear regression on this survey data. So that you'll typically see that, but not always. Like you saw with the bike buyers at the beginning of this video, there are legitimate cases where it just depends on the variables you have and the actual spread of the data and that type of thing. Um, you just, and you still have to try all of them no matter what. Anyway, that's uh, neural networks.